and welcome to another episode of the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast with your host, John Farquhar of Summit Risk Solutions and Chris Harris of Safety Dog. Hi, everybody. Let me get John in here because we got a couple of things that we would like to address this week. Hey, a glad hey. to address, John, because we're going to address. Ooh, good deal. We're going to address pet peeves, I wonder. Yeah, well, like, let's go on a rant. Oh, I love rants. <laughs> I love rants. Happy rants, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I really like that shirt. Flash that shirt yeah, to like, everyone. Look like at that. that. Look at that. Ooh, just, you know, it's like a little Vanna White thing. Ooh, yeah. check it out. <laughs> you know, looking sexy, Johnny. Okay. Yes, well, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me throw the ball. Okay. Per se, over to Mr. John Farquhar, Summit Risk Solutions. Here we go. Okay. Following too close, Johnny. Oh! Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> Why? What, what is the reason for following too close? What, what is what, the reason what? for not following too close? Oh, obviously to me, somebody's in a rush and it's like, get the hell out of my way. Come on, I'm trying to go. I want to intimidate the guy in front of me and, you know, trying to get him to move over in the, right, in the, in the middle lane or get out of my way. Like, what's, what's that old phrase? You know, uh, lead, follow, or get the hell off onto the porch, or something like that. I don't know, but yeah, what, what, why, what, 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 what are we in such a big rush for? Well, because we get paid by the mile, and not to go uh, down that yeah. route again. Mm. What are you observing yeah. on the highways when you're out there? I, I am seeing too much following, too close, and and I, I would hazard to say. I see it in a particular lane even, you know, and, and, and don't get us wrong, this is in all types of vehicles, but the sad part is it's the bigger vehicles we see the most, you know, and, and it's these big monstrous trucks and trailers, multi-axles, multi-wheels going up and down the road, and I'm seeing, we get into congested areas, and I see guys that are just, you know, tractor trailer, tractor trailer, tractor trailer, and they're all, be lucky if you could get a car between the two of them. Yeah, and so. I, I mean, I'm witnessing the exact same thing mm-hmm. whenever I'm on the highway, and I'm no saint when I'm out there on the highway, so in case yeah. anybody thinks that I do my 95 in my car uh, on a 100K road, that's I not hate. what I'm saying. You're going to get run over. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I am saying that I agree with you, that I see, yeah. um, and it doesn't matter which lane, and again, just this week, I saw a tractor trailer in the prohibited left lane again. Like, oh. WTF, what are you doing out there? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And he was out there, or she, uh, I shouldn't assume mm-hmm. it was a he, yep. Uh, yep. but that truck driver was in the left prohibited lane for a yep. significant length of time. Uh-huh. And of course, because they were governed. Uh, yep. They weren't going very fast, as fast as everybody else wanted to go mm-hmm. in the left lane. Mm-hmm. Now they're holding up traffic, giving us a bad yep. rep. Yep. Um, yep. You know, anyways, what are the yeah. downsides, John? What? Uh, tell me why I shouldn't be pushing these cars out of my way. Well, that's called aggressive driving. You know, now all of a sudden you're just going to peeve off the guy in front of you or better still you're going to peel off the people behind you and all it does is help give trucking a bad name you know like years ago we used to be the knights of the road you know every truck driver was held to a high standard because they they were polite you know and then yeah you had the odd one that kind of ticked you off here and there but we're seeing a lot more of that now unfortunately and 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 we're just not we're not helping ourselves to um clean up the image in the industry right now you know there's a lot of good drivers out there that are getting a bad rap because of a you know a handful of guys that just don't get it well and i wanted to throw in there that i mean first of all let's emphasize that you said there are a lot of good drivers out there yes a Uh, lot of good ones and we're not talking to those ones no but those ones who are aren't in those good and i'll bet you if if we were able to interview a driver uh and say hey you know we observed you following too close mm-hmm. their response would be no i wasn't yeah i had I lots of that. lots of yeah. space yep right yep. 
but we yeah. both know, and we've done episodes on the past about six mm-hmm. seconds following distance yep. and, and yep. why you need it scientifically yep. and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Not to yep. rehash that, mm-hmm. but when we're out there on the roads, we mm-hmm. know by ob- observation that if something happened in front, there's no yes. way that truck is coming to a full and complete stop no. with uh, no. hitting something. It, no. An example, John, um, and this happens, of course, yep. I was working as an expert witness for a lawyer, so without giving too much detail, yep. uh, two trucks from the same company, both in the right, no, but these guys were in the right-hand lane, John. <laughs> yep, okay. They're both in the right-hand yep. lane yep. in a snowstorm on the 401, mm-hmm. and uh, the truck driver said, the, the one following said, I had lots of space. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, but I, I looked and the, the guy I'm following hit his brakes. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I couldn't stop in time. Mm-hmm. So I glanced off the side of that truck as I mm-hmm. s- just made a small impact on the rear <laughs> and went from the right lane, and without giving all of the, the stuff yeah. away, he went yeah. right into the, uh, hit the concrete median in Ooh. in the left, extreme left. Yeah. So went two more lanes over. Yeah. Well, two and a half, because he yeah. went through the shoulder and yeah. hit the concrete barrier. Oh, and yes, I know it was snowing, yeah. and so there was adverse driving conditions, yep. but... Yep. When I read the driver's statement, because this all goes to court now, yep, um, yep. you know the driver said I had adequate following distance. Mm-hmm. He believed, and it was a he mm-hmm. in this case. He mm-hmm. believed in his heart, yep, that he had adequate following distance. And some jerk like me yep. has to write that no, if you can't come to a full and complete stop without stop. hitting the vehicle that you're following. Yep. Yep. You did not have adequate following distance. Right. Exactly. And it comes as a shock to the driver. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, because yep. as I say, quite honestly, in I believe every word that I read of his statement that mm-hmm. he believed he had adequate following right. distance, but it was the road conditions. Right. Yep. Uh, aren't we supposed to I, drive according to conditions? Yes. We we have to adapt. To the road conditions so hey if the roads are a little messy and sloppy and slippery even just rain will make it slipperier we need to back off more so what we thought might have been adequate conditions and super dry uh, nice clean pavement asphalt is no longer adequate when it's now sloppy and soupy out there so we need to back yeah. off even more yeah, and that's true but let's yeah. go back to the dry road situation mm-hmm. do we truthfully have adequate following distance on dry roads. Can you bring that 80,000 pounds of rolling death to a mm-hmm. full and complete stop mm-hmm. without evasive maneuvers? It, for example, right. without going to the shoulder right. of the truck, right. uh, with yep. the truck. Yep. So, well, and I think this is the problem where their uh, perception per se of what adequate stopping distance or, or uh, distance between right. the two vehicles is, is is questionable because you kind of have to start going backwards now and go, okay, where did you learn that this was adequate? You know, oh, well, I learned it from some truck driver in another truck stop and we had a chat one day and he told me, you know, if you did this. Well, there, there's scientific studies out there uh, and there's lots of training and coaching opportunities to explain what is exactly the distance that you need because there are numerous factors involved between perception, reaction, uh, brake lag, uh, and then the weight of the vehicle, the conditions of the, uh, of the asphalt, the road surface that you're on, because that'll all dictate different conditions again, because some asphalt is slipperier than others. Um, gravel roads are actually slipperier than asphalt. Right. Because it's loose, right? So, you know, so there's all kinds of things there that play into it. So you need to adjust your driving to the conditions that you're operating in. So I guess my question would be, regardless of what adequate distance is between two vehicles, why are you that close anyway? Why couldn't you even back off even further? Yeah, and I think, honestly, if you did back off even further, that 
you might just enjoy your job more. Yes. And I know those damn four wheelers and some other truck drivers, if you do back <laughs> off further, are going to yep. take that nice space away. Yep. Um, yep. But I tell you, it, let them, let them take yes. that space let them away. have it. Because yep. you've got a, you know, most drivers have a spouse and children and, mm -hmm. and maybe their grandparents or maybe yep. you've got, uh, you know, there's people that love them. Yep. It doesn't yep. matter how you work it. Uh, you've got to do your job. You've got to make your money and you got to get home safe. Everybody Each get home safe. and every yep. shift. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Exactly. And it's so thing. I. I'll give I'll give a little example. This this one might be hard to believe for a lot of people, but um, um, I, I'm not a huge speeder by any means. Uh, but when I had my truck, so I, I as we know I've talked about before, I've ha I had a fleet of trucks back in the day, and uh, my last new truck was uh, was a 2002 Peterbilt, and uh, I actually had my dad drive for me. He drove my uh, my 2000 or 99 Kenworth. Anyway. We set, we set a challenge for ourselves between my dad and myself, and uh, it was all about fuel mileage. Who could beat the other in fuel mileage? And the only way you were going to beat fuel mileage was to get your foot off the pedal. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because, you know, we'd go to different locations or we'd meet up the same area, but it was all about, hey, I'm going here, I'm going to go here. Let's see who gets the best fuel mileage. And we found that a prime speed to operate at was 95, 96 kilometers per hour. Okay, and, and I drove that for a very long time uh, because in my truck, I got, I had an automatic transmission in that truck and it was all spec'd out particular for what I did. And I averaged uh, just a hair under 12 mile to the gallon Canadian with that truck. And I always did 95, 96 kilometers an hour. Now, I know I pissed people off because I was putting along and they'd have to go around me, but I'd let them go around me. I never had to follow anybody. I had all the distance north. The cars would go by, no problem. You know, we never caused a wreck going that speed. But I got good fuel mileage, which was money in my pocket. My dad got fuel mileage. He was getting close to 10 mile a gallon with the Kenworth that he drove for me. You know, and it was a hoot. And the silly part was, we still got there at the same time. You know, we didn't lose much time getting there. A couple of minutes, maybe, but, you know, you weren't hours behind, you know. But And, and what was really interesting was I was super relaxed. You know, yeah. I wasn't clinging to the steering wheel doing 105 and slamming on the pedal to try and get it to its max on the, well, back then we didn't have the regulators at that point. But nonetheless, you know, you weren't slamming it to the floor to get it to do as much and as fast as it would go. It just, it, it, there was no need for it. So, yeah. and, and it just made life easy and simple. I'll tell you, there's a lot to be said for enjoying your job. Yes. Every yes. day. Yes. Like, yes. wouldn't that make you yep. a better parent if yep. you came home less stressed every day? Yep, exactly. Like, yep. You'd, you'd probably have a better attitude when meeting that pissy customer or that shipper oh. receiver because, hey, I'm in a better mood. I'm smiling. I'm feeling good. I got a good night's sleep. I'm not killing myself. You know, and, it, and it's funny because we'll throw some regulations in here for a quick second. The speed limit on the highway says maximum 100 kilometers per hour doesn't mean you have to do 100 or 105 just because your truck's governed to 105 doesn't mean you got to slam the pedal to the floor and get 105 you know what do 95 do yourself a challenge and try that just like your hours of service does not say you have to max out at 13 hours in canada or 11 hours in the u.s driving you don't have to do that right it's there if you need it and if you have to run that hard because you think you need to make that kind of money, then maybe this isn't the career for you. Because when you're slamming it to the wall day in and day out, you are an unsafe driver. You certainly put yourself into a position that you yes. might be an unsafe. Like, because quite honestly, I, I remember when I was a younger man, mm -hmm. um, coming home from Florida uh, with yep. my, at that time, my wife and my kids in yep. the car. Yep. And I yep. just finished two weeks of a glorious vacation. I was very mm -hmm. well rested. Mm -hmm. And I know I wasn't driving a tractor trail. I was driving a car, yep. but I've got my kids in the car. Yep. Coming home from Florida that day, I drove 18 hours. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. I was fully rested, and I would yep. never put my children uh, 
at risk. So yep. I stopped when I started to get tired. But mm-hmm. because I had just finished two weeks of vacation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was rested. I couldn't do that every day. Never mind no. the stress of no. being a tractor trailer driver yep. or any commercial yep. driver. Um, yep. And of course, this was a long time ago when I was a younger man. Yep. I don't think the traffic right. was nearly as heavy as it is today. No. No. With, his, no. with all of the challenges and the new rules mm-hmm. and the regulations mm-hmm. and, and ELDs and dash cams. Yep. And, yep. This yep. all adds... I believe yep. to the driver's yep. stress level. It does. It does. Agreed. And yep. so. we've started finally in our industry talking about truck driver mental health. And I mm-hmm. think a lot of these mm-hmm. things have added to the stresses of truck drivers. Yes. Um, yes. You know, and we, so, anyways. Oh, it, 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 <sighs> stress. Yeah. Stress. Stress is going to add to the behavioral change that a driver is going to have, or right. a person for that matter, right? And 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 it's going to be a situation where you're going to be. I'm in. I'm in a rush. I got to get there. I got to get there. I got to make time up. I got to do this. You know. And 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 that's one of the downfalls of our industry is I'm sitting in a dock. I'm not getting paid. I get paid by the mile, as we mentioned in the beginning, and now I got to go, 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 go. Well, now I'm adding stress. I'm adding pressure to this. So. I'm going to take and make some risky moves. I'm going to take yes. some cha- chances here because I need to make up some time. When, well, if we changed how we thought a little bit and we looked at how we pay our drivers differently, you know, we're kind of going down this road here where, you know, if we change how we do that, we could eliminate a lot of these problems because it would in turn slow the driver down. There'd be no need to be in a rush because you would be counter intuitive to what you're doing if if i get paid by the hour why the hell do i need to do 100 mile an hour now no i'm getting paid a decent wage so i can take a longer coffee break sure why not you know but i think the i think the thing is the mentality with drivers is i i think owners are concerned that the driver's going to take that longer lunch break that longer coffee break well in the trucking industry guys want to go to work they, they don't want to well, sit around. Yeah, yeah, so you're paying me 20 bucks an hour, but I'm not wanting to sit around. I want to get moving. I got things to do because I eventually want to get to my destination, turn around, get loaded, and come back home to spend time with my family. And not only that, you actually, with the uh, telematics today, we know when the truck is yes. stopped. So yes. uh, drivers know that if they abuse the system, they're going to be called yep. up. So, yep. all right, yep. let's. I think yep. we beat the... Oh, yeah. That Jesus horse is dead. The, it's barely blinking. You know. So that was following distance. Let's switch yep. to, and, and this, uh, I was going up the 400 highway for those of our listeners in the States. That's uh, one of our, um, uh, what do you Major call interstates. it in the States? Uh, interstates. interstate highways. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's one of the interstate highways. And I was going up in my car, and I happened to be in the right-hand lane for a change. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the right-hand lane, and almost get pushed out of my lane by a truck what it happened to be a straight truck yeah um, and so as i creep past the driver i looked over and what did i say well, johnny what do you think i mm. saw i'm betting he had something like this <laughs> <laughs> you know and I'm thinking of, and of course, both countries have the law that says commercial yeah. drivers can't be touching their cell yeah. phone. Um, right. You know, and God, it just. Oh, yeah. It, it drives me crazy. And, and yep. l- let's go on this rant. Because yep. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm going to do uh, this thing here. If you Google, and this is disgusting. As far as I'm concerned, that us men, because yep. I I have to say it's probably majority of men. Mm-hmm. I just googled here uh, because I thought it was an an how do you say that word anomaly. I thought yep. it was yep. highly unusual. Right. I heard of a right. truck driver getting convicted for vehicular homicide in yep. New York State a number of years ago because they proved in court this driver was watching porn on his laptop. Down the road. Well, I thought I could easily find that story. Yeah. Well, if you Google this, you can't easily find it because it, as we scroll through and look at all the different dates, you know, 2020, 2019, 2021, 2010, 2010, 2017, 2020. Like, my God, aren't Jeez. some of us at least yeah. perverted pigs? Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I just, 
So this is another form of distracted driving. Oh, huge, and huge. So huge. let's yeah, talk wanna, about yeah, that. Yeah, well, if you want to watch the video, well, then park the damn truck, sit in a safe place, relax, watch your porn, watch your football game, cricket game, hockey game, whatever well, you want. Hold on, let's go back. Let's not... Um, promote watching that no no junk. But, but 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 the thing is if I'm you want to watch swear. that video yeah <laughs> but if you want to catch that game and i know there's a lot of people you know that love football soccer they yes. want to watch the game or whatever then park the damn truck for that hour or whatever time and watch the game you know in the safe place don't be trying to catch the game while you're trying to do your job and drive down the road like oh next thing you're gonna do you're gonna be falling too close well, you're not doing your job. Well, I mean, no. you off camera were telling me about the story about the driver being pulled in for an inspection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was talking to a, an MTO enforcement officer one day, and, and he was telling me how, uh, you know, they waved the driver in, bring the lights in and whatnot, and they asked the driver to stop there at the window so they could talk to him. And the, and the, uh, and the driver actually said to the officer, just a minute, and he had to reach over. And he had his phone on a stand on the dash in front of his steering wheel, and he had to pause the video that he was watching so he didn't miss a spot so then he could have a chat with the officer about what the officer wanted. And the officer was just appalled and thinking, first off, you paused me to pause a video? Like, what are you doing? You know, and uh, needless to say, he, he wasn't holding the, ho the phone, so he thought he was totally legal, and which is not the case. So the, the officer charged him with careless driving. Yeah. And for our listeners and our viewers, I would refer back to, was it D uh, David Connolly? Who, who was our guest that we had on that talked about um, how they can go into your mobile phone and do the forensic? Oh, uh, 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 Jason. Jason J from, uh, yeah, um, Invista. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah, they can they can do a forensic audit on your on your phone and find out everything and what time and what gigabytes and all that good stuff. So yeah, so there's yeah. no hiding it. And so if I remember, I, I will put a link to that uh, episode mm -hmm. right here because that was a great yeah, it was uh, episode. If uh, for our listeners and our viewers, um, yep. you know, click that link and listen to him and tell you uh, about how. They can dig deep through your electronic device mm -hmm. and find out exactly what the heck you yeah. are doing. Yeah. Um, so don't be doing that. That uh, yeah. distracted driving just well is. yeah, and, and 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 it's more than just the phone as we're, as we're kind of alluding yes. to, but also at the same time, a lot of drivers will think, but I've got my headset on, my Bluetooth, I'm I'm good to go. No, you're not. Because even though your phone is sitting over here and you're talking through it here and your hands are on the wheel, your mind is not in control of this vehicle that you're operating. You're now going to, you can't think of driving and the conversation you're having at the same time. It's proven. We cannot multitask. Yes. And the, the other part of that too, of course, in I understand drivers wanting to stay connected with their mm -hmm. friends and their family, and, and yep. I think the cell phone is very important, oh. uh, and it's a great tool. However, when you start out with that um, initial phone call, and I'm thinking more to a spouse, mm -hmm. you, you think you're just doing a check call and, and it's going to be very pleasant, but not every phone call with people that mean a lot to us mm -hmm. goes as we planned yep. and if it gets yep. into anything other than a hi dear how are you how's yep. your day going yeah you are absolutely distracted yep. and exactly you know if you get into the pending divorce or the problem with the children and all the other things that life is all oh. about dispatch uh, is pushing me to get where oh. i need to go and i pissed off with those guys i'm looking for a new job and you know your mind is not on the task of operating that commercial motor vehicle yeah. or any vehicle for that matter uh, i tell you it's some of the stuff that we expect our drivers to do is yep. counterproductive yep. it is it is to it the is. way we dispatch them to the way yep. our customers our shippers treat yep. them and yep. to general well-being um mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you and I both believe that 
some changes are coming yep. uh, to our industry. Unfortunately, yep. not fast enough. No, but I do believe some changes are coming, yep. positive changes, yep. to yep. make things better. Um, yep. yeah, I just wish but, they would come quicker. Yeah. Well, but the, the, the thing is, too, uh, us as individuals, you know, the drivers, people listening to the to, to our, view, our our show, the viewers and whatnot, they can make a change themselves. You don't yes. have to wait for an industry to make a change. You know, you can make a conscious decision to say, I'm going to be better at what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop this. And I, I want to give an example here of a, a customer I dealt with many years ago when I was at Zurich. And uh, they were out of um, B.C., and they were a tanker operation. They hauled uh, fuel, gasoline, diesel, and whatnot. And interesting enough, uh, this company thought they were the cat's meow. You know, ah, we're good. Yeah, no, 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 no. They got these awards from Esso and Shell and whatnot. Well, interesting enough, um, the, one of the it was a family that owned it, and one of the one of the family members who was kind of the CEO, he's uh, um, having to deal with a crash, and the crash was a rollover. It was a set of fuel, a set of trains, fuel, and it happened in the city of Abbotsford. Okay, uh, and there'll be people that'll know who I'm talking about uh, if they're from Abbotsford. Anyway, this happened, I think, back in the early 2000s. Uh, anyway, he ha they had to evacuate half the city because yeah. the fuel got into the storm drains and the water system, and they were worried about fumes. They were worried about ignition, and they were worried about a big explosion. And what was interesting is his name is all over the trucks and trailers, right? So what really hit home for him was not the crash. It was the publicity that came from the crash because his kids went to the same arena to play hockey as all the neighborhood kids. And when he's at there, the, the, all the parents are going, that's the guy that put me out of my home for a week. Uh, that's the guy that shut the city down. That's the guy that runs the company to do this and do that. And that's when he realized he was no longer the cat's meow. So they did a big investigation. Interesting enough, part of the pro part of the cause of that crash was driver on his mobile phone distracted. Okay, so they put in a policy: no more mobile phones. Dispatchers were banned from calling drivers. Um, no more. They had a Qualcomm system. That's how old it was. Qualcomm system in the truck, and that's how you will reach. The drivers you will communicate through that only and that means if the driver's moving the system's locked you won't reach the driver until he gets to his next destination then it'll ping tell him he's got a message he'll answer it through that you cannot call him through his phone and likewise the drivers are not allowed to use their phone while in the vehicle you cannot have that phone in your workplace and he set up an inspection process that whenever you came into one of the terminals okay you would come into the to the dispatch office somebody in another office would see you come in they would go out they would inspect your vehicle if your cell phone was in the truck and it was active you were immediately terminated Wow, that's how harsh he was, uh, and it was all because of this crash. Because he said, "I do not want to have a company that is ashamed to work with the community and uh, and whatnot." So, and and when I last saw him, which would have been 2012, I think it was, that policy was still in place and very very strict. And uh, every guy, every driver, or guy and girl that drove into a terminal, whichever terminal location, there was somebody there that was designated. You go out, check that driver's truck. Uh, you would check it for not just for the phone, but you would check for cleanliness, uh, make sure that it was properly organized and whatnot. Things were clean and tidy uh, as well. If you saw the phone out, uh, like sitting in a cup holder or in a seat pocket or something, you would check the phone. And if it was turned on, that was grounds for dismissal, and that was in their policy and procedures. So if the phone was turned off, then not a problem. Okay, cool. If there was no phone in the vehicle, right, then they would ask, did the driver have it on in his person, uh, or was it stashed away somewhere? And they would ask to see it. And if it was turned on, you know, then that was grounds for dismissal. So the drivers knew you don't have the phone. There's no need to have this phone. And if you needed to talk to somebody due to an emergency, you pulled over a safe location and they encouraged you to get off the road park the truck and then make that phone call yeah. so and and uh, i would add to that sentence legally park yes legally park correct yes y yeah you know. but, but he's only one company that i ever knew that was strong enough to make that decision i find so many other companies are like yeah i'd love to do that but i couldn't do that well why can't you well, do that well i need to communicate with my drivers it's why not just do you that. need to communicate with your drivers it, 
he must have had a company that drivers wanted to work for. Oh, oh, line up of drivers, right? line up of drivers. So yep. he yep. could he could do a policy like that. So, yep. and this is yep. a, a different episode, but yep. you need to make your company that company where mm-hmm. people are mm-hmm. begging to yep. work. Uh, and they'll for come. You. Oh, they'll come. Yep. yep. You know, so, and yep. part of it would be provide a safe working environment. Yep. Hey, yep. Johnny. Exactly. We're running out of time, buddy. I so can't. We talked about, oh, my God. I know. We talked about can, following too close and distracted just, driving. Drive, yep. Do you want to wrap up distracted driving? Don't do it. Don't drive distracted. Simple as that. <laughs> I know it's hard. I, I understand how hard it is. You know, we've all had that problem. And, and, and the technology is so easy to get you wrapped up in it, you know. Yeah. But even even in my vehicle when I drive, my phone goes in my console and I put it down. Uh, yes, I will have the odd conversation through my um, my Bluetooth in the vehicle. You know, we'll, we'll do the hands-free there. But I'm... I'm now cognizant much more than I was years ago of that conversation to go, okay, hang on. I'm in the middle of heavy traffic. I'll call you back later. Or if this is going to be a long conversation, why don't I wait till I get stopped? Or if it's important, hang on. Just pause while I get pulled off to the side of the road. Let me get off at this ramp here, get parked somewhere, and we can have this conversation. And and I actually had that the other day on Wednesday, uh, speaking with a, a broker client that I'm doing some work with, and he, he wanted to talk. And I said, cool, no problem. And I just happened to be coming up to an area I pulled off into this business. And it was after 6 o'clock, and I just parked the car. And it was hot out, so I left it running, and, and we talked for 20 minutes. And it was perfect because I could concentrate on the conversation we needed to have and not where I was trying to go and the conversation. It just wasn't going to happen right. So, so. Y- you did two things. You serviced your client much better by yes. being able to concentrate and yep. he- actually hear and really participate yep. in that conversation. Exactly. And, of course, you did it safely. Yep, but, so. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, and so I got home 20 minutes later than I intended to, but my wife was like, eh, no problem. Glad you're home safe. Thank you. She got home safe. Yay. Yep. Exactly. I think with that, Johnny, cool. let's wrap her up. All right. Thanks everyone for sticking around. If you are getting value from this and if you made it this far, you must be click the like and leave us a comment. What topic would you like John or I to address or John and I to address or do you have a guest speaker that you would like to hear from? Leave those notes in the comments and I thank everybody for leaving a comment. That's it for this week. The Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. John Farquhar, Chris Harris, we're out of here.